Today here in the dungeon, we're checking out the 10K Commemorative Razorback from Dean Guitars. A viewer contacted me and asked me if I would do a demo of this guitar because he saw it hanging up in the background behind me. I've had a number of people that have seen this guitar hanging up behind me over here on the wall and have asked me about it and a couple have even tried to buy it from me. Uh, so I thought I'd do a quick video on it. This is the 10K commemorative Razor bag. This is a limited run that they did circa 2009-2010 I believe. These sold brand new for $10.99 or $11.99. Uh, I can't remember which, it's been a few years now. But these are, these are no longer made, unfortunately. Dimebag was not actually seen playing this particular Razorback very often, at least certainly not nearly as often as he was. The, the Dime of Flame or the Dime Slime or the Dime Bolt, you know, those, those finishes that he was very famous for. Uh, the Rebel Flag, you know, this one wasn't one of those. This was a pretty limited run that they did. Uh, I don't know exactly how many of them they did, but they were pretty limited. In the thousands, anyway, you can find them, but you know they're so they're not uber rare, but they're not everywhere. A couple things about this guitar: it's uh, of course it's got the crazy pointy Razorback 
body style, which is a pointy modern take on the Dean ML body style. It's got a licensed Floyd Rose on it. Of course, two volume controls, one for each pickup and a tone control. Uh, dime bag happened to like the volume knobs that had the grips on them, so they're easy to roll up and down with one finger. Of course, a three-way toggle switch and your Seymour Duncan pickups. This one has a Seymour Duncan dime bucker in the bridge, which is Duncan's take on the Bill Lawrence BL500, which was actually Dimebag's pickup of choice. And the neck pickup is actually a Dean Dime Time, which is kind of similar to a Duncan 59, but it's a little bit more articulate and uh, it has a lot more, it has more clarity to it. So, I mean, it's got some vintage tonal properties to it, but also some modern tonal properties that make it a little bit different. Uh, I would happen to really, really like that neck pickup. Uh, of course, it has the diamond plate pit guard, if you will, on the front that is, it looks, it actually looks like it's metal. It might, it might be aluminum or something, but it's, uh, it's actually cut and made of plastic. And uh, so that, that when it's applied and when it's put on the edges on there, you don't want metal shards coming off and hitting your fingers and stuff like that. That can be pretty dangerous. So it is a set neck construction. This one's painted over, so it's hard to see, but it is a set neck. Uh, if the net, neck itself looks a little wider than you might expect, this one actually has a V-neck on it. Guitar players, as a rule, tend to either love or hate V-necks. Uh, I, I happen to enjoy them. I think they're comfortable to play. And this one, it's, it's, a, it's kind of a soft V, but it is a V. Uh, but it's not an uber thin type of neck like you might expect a shredder like Dimebag to play. This one's uh, a little bit a little bit fatter, but uh, you know, it's also kind of gives a little bit more support for your hand, you know, for those players, and I'm not one of them, but for those players that, you know, play really, really fast all over the neck. Of course, Rosewood fretboard, traditional razor blade 12th fret inlay, locking nut to go, licensed Floyd Rose locking nut to go with the Tremlo Grover tuners, and uh, a really cool finish. Again, it surprises me how much the value of these guitars are really going up. This one is actually made in Korea. I want to say these sold brand new for $10.99, $11.99, somewhere in there. It's, like I said, it's been a few years. The used market all of a sudden tanked the value of these, and these were selling all over the place for five dollars or $600 for a couple of years. And then about in the last two or three years, these things have skyrocketed up to the $1,000 to $1,500 range. I've seen them as high as, as I've seen them sell as high as $1,500 a piece. So there's, these are suddenly becoming in high demand. And again, I've had a lot of people comment on my videos asking me about this guitar. Uh, and it all, always, always, always brings a lot of questions from guitar players anytime I play this thing out live. So uh, the case for this thing is gigantic. It's almost as tall as I am. It's a big guitar. So uh, as, as most Razorbacks are, with a lot of points, a lot of points and a lot of pokey things on it so if you're playing it on stage make sure you got plenty of room to move around it's real easy to catch a cymbal or a cable or something like that uh, or a lead singer in the back of the head with this thing so trust me I've done it <laughs> but it is it's a really really cool guitar it's a lot of fun to play and uh, it is a really really good sounding guitar links to all the gear used in this video will be down in the description below please leave me a comment let me know what your opinions are and uh, what your favorite Dean guitar model might be if you enjoyed this video, please consider subscribing. I upload new videos to my channel every Wednesday and Saturday morning. And thank you so much for watching. If you're watching this video, most likely you're a musician. Most musicians were inspired by an event at some point in their lives to want to play music. However, what if that event still occurred, but you had no means of your own to acquire your own instrument? There are thousands of people in your own community that would love to get involved in music, but do not have the means to afford their own instrument. Please donate your broken or unwanted gear to my friends at Share the Music, where Share the Music will take those instruments, refurbish them, and give them to somebody just like us and help change their lives for the better.